land, the search of a home, where the note in which she confessed to the killing was discovered. And that, of course, led to her arrest. And who was this third person who so obligingly led the authorities down the aisle, showed them to their places in Mr. Wyatt's carefully rehearsed production? It was a man in his employ, a man who is still working for him today, and that man is David Sutton. Search for Tomorrow. This portion brought to you by Crest, the cavity fighter. Any more outbursts like that and I'll have the spectators removed from this courtroom. Mrs. Phillips. Mrs. Phillips, what is your objection? You know very well what it is, Mr. Sullivan. David Sutton is not on trial in this courtroom. John Wyatt is the only defendant named. Your Honor, if the district attorney wants to accuse David Sutton of being a party or an accessory to this crime, then let him draw up a new indictment naming David Sutton, asking for a new trial for both, and let him drop the present indictment against my client. You needn't be so exercised, Mrs. Phillips. You didn't let me finish. If you had, you wouldn't find it necessary to object. I sincerely doubt that. I am not trying to incriminate David Sutton. I'm merely pointing out that he was an unwitting tool in the hands of Mr. Wyatt. And I certainly am not suggesting he was a co-conspirator in the execution of the murder. That was not at all clear from your statement, Mr. Sullivan. In any case, you have no right to drag in the name of a man who shouldn't even be mentioned in this context. It's inflammatory and prejudicial. You've raised an objection, Mrs. Phillips, and I'm going to overrule it for the moment. I appreciate your position, but this is only the prosecution's opening statement of the case it intends to present. If it fails to do so, then you may raise your objection and I'll consider it. At any rate, you'll soon have your opportunity to rebut any specifics with which you disagree. After the district attorney finishes his opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Sullivan, you may resume your statement. Thank you, Your Honor, but I think in essence I've said all I have to say. With the evidence we intend to present to the jury will speak for itself from here on. Thank you. Is the defense ready to make its opening statement? We are, Your Honor. Then you may proceed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the facts in this case are reasonably clear cut. Jennifer Phillips, by her own confession and by virtue of her plea of guilty to the charges, is the murderer of Eunice Wyatt. Now, the only area that we do contest, but it is the salient point at issue in this trial, is the point on which the prosecution is basing its entire case, is Jennifer Phillips' unsupported accusation and the district attorney's contention that John Wyatt conspired, participated in, or had anything whatsoever to do with that murder. Mr. Sullivan would have us believe that John Wyatt is some kind of Spengali who manipulates people to accomplish his own ends, who controls the minds and deeds of all who fall under his evil influence. Well, the reality is quite, quite different. I shall introduce character witnesses of prominence here in Henderson who will quickly disabuse you of that notion. We also intend to show that the statements made by Jennifer Phillips, both written and oral, to the effect that John Wyatt conceived and masterminded this plot to kill his wife, are totally untrue. Not only is my client, John Wyatt, completely innocent of any involvement in this crime, he was entirely unaware that such a plot existed. Her so-called confession is a total fabrication. A fantasy 
set down on paper purely for the purpose of implicating John Wyatt for an act for which she alone is responsible. You may ask what possible motive she would have for wanting to implicate John Wyatt, a man she was supposedly in love with. We submit that there are several possible motives, but the most generous one would be that, that she was indeed in love with Mr. Wyatt. But I think we all know that the emotion we call love can produce and sustain tremendous confusion, particularly when that love is desperate, fixated, and in this case, entirely unrequited. Ladies and gentlemen, what I am saying is that this was the love of a sick mind, of a very disturbed Now the second portion of Search for Tomorrow, brought to you by Lilt, the one with gripper sponges, the way to beautiful hair. Now, Lieutenant Frank, I ask if you can identify this bullet and this gun for us. Yes, sir. The bullet is the one the coroner recovered from the body of Eunice Wyatt and certified it as being the cause of her death. The gun is the one that the police ballistics lab verified as having fired that very same bullet. Thank you. Your Honor, I ask that these be marked as prosecution exhibits one and two and be entered in evidence. No objection. So ordered. Thank you. Now, Lieutenant Frank, can you tell us how that gun came into the possession of the police? Yes, sir. With Mr. Wyatt's consent, he made a search of his rooms at the Hartford House Inn on New Year's Eve. During the course of that search, we found the gun hidden in the rear of a closet. We also found two other items that had been reported stolen from the scene of the murder. Are those items included? Uh, uh, just a moment, Lieutenant. Um, I show you this uh, silver cigarette case and lighter. Are these the items you're referring to? Yes, sir. Those are the, the items. Your Honor, I ask that the, these also be entered in evidence and be marked prosecution exhibits three and four. No objection. So ordered. Now, Lieutenant Frank. What occasioned the search of Mr. Wyatt's room that led to the discovery of those items? Well, it had to do with a note, or a letter, I suppose, that had been written by Jennifer Phillips. We'd found it in her possession earlier. The letter clearly indicated that Mr. Wyatt had been involved in all of this, so uh, we... Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The jury will disregard the witness's last comment. Your Honor, the letter being referred to has been alluded to earlier as the confession of Jennifer Phillips. Is this one. I ask that it be entered in evidence and be read aloud to the court. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Yes, Mrs. Phillips, Mr. Sullivan. Lieutenant Frank, will you step down, please? We'll return to our story in just a moment. Don't you have that lady return to her seat. Your Honor, if Mrs. Phillips is not going to testify, and be subject to cross-examination. 
Hamilton, I'm going to make a formal objection to having this otherwise unsupported document introduced as evidence and read to the jury. Well, let's pin this down. Mr. Sullivan, do you or do you not intend to call Jennifer Phillips as a witness? Uh, no, Your Honor, we do not. Why not? Quite frankly, she refuses to testify. Refuses? Categorically. Jennifer Phillips, will you please stand? Is it true that you have refused to testify as a witness for the prosecution in this trial? Yes, Your Honor. Will you tell us why, please? I, I just can't. Speak up, please. We can't hear you. I said I can't. The responsibility of individuals to give evidence in criminal cases is not an elective, young lady. Are you aware of the fact that you can be subpoenaed and put on the stand with, whether you wish to or not? Yes, sir. Are you further aware that if you then refuse to answer questions, you can be held in contempt of court and put in jail until you change your mind? I don't know what to do. I am waiting for your answer, Mrs. Phillips. That won't be necessary, Your Honor. The defense withdraws its objection to the introduction of the letter. Very well. Mrs. Phillips, you may sit down. Let us proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. The clerk is instructed to uh, mark the letter as prosecution exhibit next in order and to read it aloud to the jury. My darling John, you were right last night. We've gone too far and been too careful to make any stupid mistakes now. You've played your part perfectly because everyone thinks you and Eunice are blissfully happy now that you're back together. And as for me, I followed all your instructions to the letter. When the police find Eunice, everything will be exactly the way you wanted it. Then the police can go running after the mysterious burglar and when everything is quieted down, we'll be together again. Until then, I want you to have this to read when I'm not with you, so you'll know how much our love means to me and what I'm willing to do for it. And for you, my darling, and signed Jennifer. 